Let's talk about the movie's deeper meaning and the important messages it gives. Get ready with your popcorn, because we're diving into it. The film ends with Paul becoming the emperor after killing the Baron. He started a big war against other houses, but it's not supposed to feel like a happy ending because Paul's actions might lead to the deaths of many people. In the first movie, there was a line. It talked about who might oppress us next. It made me think the Fremen are still oppressed. This prophecy is about enslaving. Now they're going out to kill anyone who doesn't agree with them. Even Paul sees this, but he keeps going because revenge is all he's got. That's something important many people miss in the movie. It's a bit different from the book. You can see it in two ways. Either the prophecy is coming true, or Paul is making it happen. But it's clear they're using religion for their own gain. Paul keeps telling his mother they've done their work well. He knows he can use their beliefs to his advantage. Jessica and Aelia also talk about converting people. They spread the word that he's the chosen one, both knowingly and by manipulating others. Paul even has a vision where his mother leads him to genocide. He knows the prophecy isn't real, it's been planted there to control him. But it's so well written that even when he denies it, people still believe it. He's like a hype man for a fake idea. We go into this topic later in the video. Paul openly says he wants to get back at the people who killed his dad. This seems to be what's driving him. He acts like he's helping the Freeman, but giving the Emperor his family's ring tells me otherwise. The ring has been in his family for a long time, and his dad struggled with it too. When Paul finds it after his dad dies, it's like a symbol of power. Him wearing it shows he's okay with this power. When I watched again, it seemed like Paul's main goal was revenge, even though he acted like he was leading the Fremen to freedom. Now they're going to spread his message across the universe, and anyone who disobeys will face consequences. This movie shows how easy it is to get caught up in Paul's actions. He might seem like the good guy, and I have to admit, I started to believe in what he was doing, especially when he arrived in the South with a lot of support. Even when he talked about his grand having a wonky eye, I was ready to support him. It's true that things might have been better with Fade in charge, but both him and Paul are pretty much the same, violent and seeking revenge. Either way, a Harkonnen ends up ruling. Paul killing the Baron is like what Fade would do, but it's more symbolic. But make no mistake, the Baron would have been removed, and either his nephew or grandson would have taken his place. This is shown to us when we see the bodies of their soldiers being burned, which brings things full circle from the beginning. There it was, the Atreides, after the Battle of Arrakeen, and the images perfectly mirror each other. There's an old saying that if you seek revenge, you should dig two graves, and I think that's what happens here too. And in the end, Paul loses himself. When you take a life, you lose a part of yourself, much like in the first film. I think he goes through a metaphorical death, and in his place, something else rises up. What we're seeing here is the beginnings of a tyrant who's manipulated people to gain power. He does this through true fanaticism, and the movie shows us how bad it can be. It's something we see in many aspects of life, and it can lead to death and destruction. People can commit horrible acts in the name of God, but even beyond that, faith can be used to deceive others into doing things. In the first part, there are these special trees that use up a lot of water, even though it's wasteful. In part two, there's a pool of water for the dead that no one drinks from, but they keep it anyway. Both things are done just because of tradition, even though they could help people more. Paul plays into this tradition, making people believe in him. But instead of leading them to a better place, he leads them to war. This idea of opposites is also shown in Fade, who is the perfect opponent for Paul. Sure, the battle on the outside looks great, but this duel shows the real essence of warfare. Right now, this battle will decide who wins the war. If Paul loses, everyone loses. He sees things as black and white like a psychopath. Just because Paul wins doesn't mean everything's safe. He sends soldiers to destroy the houses masking. Controlling means for him to control everything, and Paul's actions only bring new oppression. This dark aspect of the movie might change how you see it. 
If you have your own thoughts, please share them below. So, what are your thoughts about the ending? How do you see this going on? Is Paul going to be more aggressive in the way of how he plans and executes his ideas? If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. We are interested in your opinion, so take a second to write it down. Until then, stay curious, stay creative, and keep exploring.